Hello and welcome to this lesson on fiber optics, which is part of the waves topic in AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how a fiber optics works. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should state the conditions needed for total internal reflection understand how a step index optical fiber works including the cladden and understand modal and material dispersion which is in the following part of the AQAA level physics specification 3.3.2.3 refraction at a plane surface now fiber optics utilize the phenomena of total internal reflection to send high speed light signals over large distances and here is a diagram of a fiber optic now you'll notice that uh, fiber optics have many important uses in the real world, such as communication in telephone and internet transmission and in medical imaging, such as in endoscopes. Now fiber optics have many advantages over copper wires for transferring information. Fiber optics can carry more information than copper wires. The uh, light when traveling down a fiber optic will not heat it up, unlike electrical signals in copper wires. There's no electrical interference in a fiber optic as opposed to a copper wire and fiber optics are cheaper than copper wires and the signal can travel a lot faster in a fiber optic cable than it can in a copper wire. Now fiber optics work because light is shone in at one end of the fiber. The light then hits the boundary between the fiber and the cladden at an angle greater than the critical angle. This ensures that the light travels down the cable so it carries out total internal reflection. The total internal reflection process ensures the light completes the, the entire journey inside the fiber optic and no light is transmitted out of the fiber optic. Now there are three main components that make up optical fibers. You have your optically dense core, which is made of a material such as plastic or glass, a lower optically density, a lower optical density cladden surrounding the core, and an outer sheath. So you can see on this diagram the sheath is around the outside, the cladden is then in the middle, along with the core in the dead center. Now a fiber optic which has the cladden with a lower refractive index than the core's refractive index is called a step index fiber optic. Now this is important since you need the refractive index of the core to be greater than the refractive index of the cladding to allow for total internal reflection to occur. So it's extremely important that the refractive index of the core, N1, is greater than the refractive index of the cladding, N2. Now you can see here an example of a step index fiber optic that the cladding has a smaller refractive index than the core. Now we have an outer sheath on a fiber optic because this outer sheath will prevent physical damage to the fiber, it will give the fiber strength and will also protect the fiber from outside scratches. Now cladding has multiple uses. Firstly it protects the core from damage. Secondly, it prevents signal degradation as the light as from light escaping the core. So it's important for that because if that happened, it would indicate that light could in fact be lost. So the, the information from the signal could be lost with the light. Another thing is that it keeps the signal secure and maintains the quality of our original signal. In addition, the cladding will prevent the scratching of the core and Finally, it will also keep the core away from the adjacent fiber cores, so therefore there's very little crossover of information to the other fiber. And in addition, if you do have a bit of cladding, it will provide that optical fiber with the strength and prevent breakage as the core itself it tends to be very, very thin. It tends to have diameters on the, on the order of micrometers. Now the core allows for the transmission of light in the fiber optic with very little absorption taking place. So information is sent down optical fibers as pulses of light. So this makes up the signal of information and we send this down the fiber optic via total internal reflection. So as you can see in this particular image, you can see that as the air light hits our core, it will refract because it's in a new material. It will then carry out total internal reflection through the core not air uh, transmitting through the cladding and going to the other end of your fiber optic now please remember for total internal reflection to occur that the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle and that the refractive index of the cladding must be lower than the refractive index of the core but because reflection is taking place the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection inside the core 
Now, it is important to note that while we send our light signal down the fiber optic and then transfers through it via total internal reflection, over time this signal is degraded by absorption or dispersion. So this de degradation can cause the information to be lost from the fiber optic. Now, absorption is where some of the signal's energy is absorbed by the material the fiber is made from. So you can see here that when absorption takes place, this energy loss results in the amplitude of the signal being reduced, which can lead to a loss of information in the signal. Now, absorption can be caused by the signal being attenuated by the core, so by the core either scattering or absorbing um, the light energy as it transfers through the actual core itself. So to reduce absorption, it's important that we use a core which is extremely transparent, or we could use a set of optical fiber repeaters which regenerates the pulse of the light before significant absorption has taken place and they can be positioned throughout your fiber optic uh, system. Now the other way in which um, the signal can be degraded, be how can it undergo degradation, is via pulse broadening. So pulse broadening is when the received signal is broader than the initial signal. So you can see here that if pulse broadening takes place, you can see that the actual signal itself has spread out over a larger distance. Now this is extremely important when uh, the broad and pulse can overlap each other as this can lead to information being lost as you can't actually work out what the signal is showing you because uh, finally your, your final pulse which you get at the end of your fiber optic would be distorted now pulse broadening is caused by both material dispersion and modal dispersion now material dispersion or spectral dispersion occurs when white light is shone down your fiber optic as opposed to monochromatic light that's because white light is made up of many different wavelengths of the different colors of the spectrum and they all travel at different speeds so for example blue travels slower than red light because blue has a greater refractive index so because blue is traveling slower than the red light and they'll both go over the same distance this indicates to us that the red light will reach the end of the fiber optic before the blue light so this will cause the different colors of the spectrum to spread out as they travel through the fiber optic so you can see in this particular image what's going on here that the different colors of the white light will separate out or as it transfers through the fiber optic via total internal reflection so you can see that with our original pulse that it has spread out due to this material dispersion the pulse has been broadened so we can use monochromatic light and that can actually stop material dispersion taking place now the other type of dispersion is modal dispersion. So modal dispersion occurs when the light pulses in the optical fibers are spread out as they travel through the fiber optic via total internal reflection because their different angles of incidence will lead to different paths and path distances. So therefore they will, even though they're all traveling at the same speed, they will spread out over a long distance because they're all taking a different path. So this is actually more prominent in wider cores as the light traveling along the axis of the core will travel a shorter distance than light undergoing total internal reflection at the core, the core cladding boundaries. Now this causes pulse broadening as the pulse will emerge longer than they should be. So you can see here that with modal, now modal means path, so with this modal dispersion there are many different possible paths that the um, that the light can take down the fiber optic so therefore they'll spread out because they're traveling different distances so you'll get your broadened pulse so to prevent modal dispersion you need to use a core in your fiber optic which is very very narrow because if it's very narrow it will only have one path so we say it's a single mode or mono mode fiber so just to clarify, material dispersion occurs due to the pulse broadening as though different wavelengths of white light traveling through the fiber optic will travel at different speeds and so will spread out over the entire journey. And this can be prevented by using monochromatic light. Now modal dispersion occurs when the light pulses take different paths down the fiber optic so will travel different distances. So even though they travel at the same speed, they will have different distances to travel so therefore they will spread out so again to prevent modal dispersion the core needs to be very narrow so this means that the core only has one path uh, or it has a single mode now both material and modal dispersion can lead to pulse broadening now like just men mentioned just previously 
If a fibre does not have a narrow core, then there are multiple paths that the light ray can take in the core, as you can see in the following diagram. So in an axial ray, that's when they travel down the middle of the fibre, and non-axial rays are where the rays reflect off the side of the fibre and carry out total internal reflection. Now, as you can see, because the axial ray is going straight down the path, um, whilst the non-axial ray is reflecting, the axial rays will travel much faster than the non-axial rays. So this difference can cause the pulse broadening effect. And as we mentioned before, this can be prevented by having a narrow core, which is a single mode fiber. But it can also be reduced by having a small difference in the refractive index between the core and the cladding. Because if you have a small difference in the refractive index between the two, this will give a large value for the critical angle. So if you have a large value for the critical angle, this gives few potential paths for the light ray to travel down. So therefore, there's only a few possible um, modes in which your um, light rays can travel. So therefore, they'll mostly travel down the same uh, paths. So therefore, they will travel at the same speed and you'll not have and the same distance so you won't have that pulse broadening effect now it's important to note that even though the two values for the refractive index of the core and the cladding have to be very similar so there's a small difference it's important to note that the refractive index of the core must be higher than that of the cladding to get the total internal reflection process so if we've learned in today's lesson we should be able to understand the simple treatments of fiber optics including the function of cladding understand what a step index fiber optic is understand about material and modal dispersion and understand the principles and consequences of pulse broadening and absorption so if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson we can state the conditions needed for total internal reflection understand how a step index optical fiber works including how cladding works and we can also understand modal and material dispersion so thank you very much for watching this lesson on fiber optics, which is part of the waves topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.